I got a question from a young man who wanted my help. And the title is, I keep fapping thinking about my classmates. I have a classmate, she is a half Jessica. So a half, a Jessica means a girl who's kind of like a Jeffrey. Jeffrey is like a guy who's not on self-improvement and he's just doing all the bad habits. So basically he's, he's has a classmate who's basically kind of like a loser. Like she might be kind of attractive, but she does basically only bad habits. She probably eats like potato chips and watches Netflix and she doesn't even brush like the back of her tongue. So her breath kind of smells. She doesn't, she can't even do one push up or pull up or anything because she doesn't go to the gym. <laughs> She sends me clear signs that she's attracted to me. She often touches me, it's my weakness. I don't want to get with her, but I have a major problem. I really enjoy to spend time with her in school. We laugh and talk a lot, but it's hard for me to stop thinking about her in a sexual way. And I don't want to, but I keep thinking about her in random times of the day. These thoughts really slow me down and I can't really cut her off because she sits right behind me. I don't want a relationship right now, especially not with her. I want to see her as a friend and stop thinking about her. And because of this, I fap almost every day. I'm on self-improvement for like a year now and I have a business and, I'm, and in the last one to two months, it's just going downhill and I still battle with lust. It's my weakness. And then we've got some comments as well. We'll read them out and then I'll give you my opinion. So Mason said, you don't need to suppress your masculine urge to dominate women. It's okay to stare at their ass and look at them sexually because that's a sign of masculinity and testosterone. I wonder what you think about that as well. Like I, I can imagine that comment just triggered a lot of people, but I wonder, just leave a comment below. This is, it's not really me trying to farm the YouTube algorithm, but I guess it'll help it. You don't have to if you don't want to, but like that specific sentence, Mason has just commented saying, you don't need to suppress your masculine urge to dominate women. It's okay to stare at their ass and to look at them sexually because that's a sign of masculinity and testosterone. What do you think about that? I think that like that's that's going to have a mixed response from even from guys as well. I can imagine a lot of guys will think, "Oh, well that's that's weird." I can imagine a lot of guys being like, "Yeah, like I I love to stare at girls' asses." I think I'm somewhere in in the middle. I think stare is is a is a um significant word to use here. I think it's absolutely normal, healthy, and in a weird way, this is going to sound weird, and I'm sure someone will clip this or some bullshit, but I encourage you to like look at a woman who's attractive. I encourage you that like, if there's a woman there, you're able to kind of feel your attraction towards her and enjoy it. In fact, this is the advice I was, I was gonna give my advice later on, but I'll just tell you right now, this is the advice I was gonna say to this young man. This is how to handle lust and attraction towards women. First, you need to understand sexual energy. So sexual energy is basically where most of our power comes from and it originates in your belly. The reason why you struggle with lust, the reason why so many young guys are jacking off and fapping, so you should be listening to this. If this is your problem, you, you know, you're struggling with just fapping too much, this is why. It's because you don't understand the concept of sexual energy. It starts in the stomach and it gets constrained. Basically, your sexual energy gets stuck either in your genitals or your mind. Imagine sexual energy that if we clo close your eyes right now and imagine looking at yourself almost from third person, kind of like you're a character in like a video game character selection screen. Sexual energy, you can view almost like a red mist and the red mist, you know, like a, like a, like a, um, a spray bottle. Imagine I got a little spray bottle that you use for plants and I put red liquid inside and I sprayed red mist on you. That's what sexual energy will kind of look like, right? And mostly it will be around your genitals, so around your dick and your balls, or in your or over your brain. Like this is how you could almost imagine it, right? You fap at times when you are unskilled enough to circulate this energy around your body. So what this means is imagine, okay, here's you, character selecting, okay, we're like imagining you in third person, right? You're just doing a you know normal life, and then you randomly get a thought about something horny, like something sexy, right? So the girl that you like or some porn that you watch that you randomly get a thought, what instantly happens is that red mist grows and gets darker around your mind. And then one of two things happens or one of three things, but it'll only be two for you. Either one, you'll keep fantasizing about whatever you're thinking about. And that red mist will again, get darker and more concentrated in your mind. Or two, if it feels like safe enough to do so, your body will kind of allow your genitals to get aroused and then your dick will get hard. And that red mist will then mostly move over to your dick. That's where your sexual energy is. 
This is where most men stop. This is why most men have problems with ejaculation, with fapping, with porn. You wanna fix this problem, I'm gonna give you advice that no one's ever told you before, but this is the thing that actually helps. The way to, oh, close your eyes again, the way to overcome the problem of fapping and lust and everything is to see that sexual energy that is now like focused and constrained and stuck on either your genitals or your mind and to move it and disperse it all over your body. Because you can imagine, how look, look at how dark and concentrated it is right now. If we spread out that red mist over our body, it would be so spread out and diluted that it'd be more like this pink, like this, this beautiful, haze of like a nice buzz, it wouldn't be this incessant need to spray your seed to release because that's what it feels like. Open your eyes, right? This is what it feels like for this young man and for you. It feels like this need to release a certain amount of energy. As soon as you get that, that trigger, that mental thought, or your dick randomly gets hard, you have this masculine need to release energy and to feel more free. If you do that through nutting, through ejaculating, you, you temporarily, for like a few seconds, you get that release, but then obviously you feel like a degenerate, you feel like an idiot, you've reset your nofap streak, all of that stuff, right? We don't wanna be doing that. This is what you need to do. You need to circulate that energy, and the way you do that is through your breath. So your breath can be used to control your sexual energy. This is shit you've never spoke about before. This is in like spiritual text. I learned this from the book, The Way of the Superior Man, that you can go and research after this. This is how to do this. Close your eyes again and imagine you in third person, kind of like the characters, you know, like um, when you're choosing between characters on a, on a game and it says like, oh, you can't unlock this character yet, whatever, like here's your character, right? And we've just, you're, you're scrolling on your phone and then on Instagram, there's a pretty girl there and the fantasy is built up. That red mist is over your brain. Then since you're at home and it's kind of safe to do so, the red mist will move over to your dick and your dick will start getting hard and you'll think about, okay, I need to release. I need to stroke my dick and ejaculate because like I need to release this energy. That's what the peasant version of you will do. That's what the mediocre version of you would do. The superior version of you will feel this energy over his dick, feel his dick getting hard, and he will then focus a million times more on his breath. And the first thing that he'll do is start to breathe really fully. So he will extend his chest outward. Now open your eyes and look at me. This is what we need to do. Too many of us, and you especially, sit, are like this all day. Basically, we're curled in on ourselves. We're, we're very like, we're like this. We're, we're, we're like, this is what we look like these days. Like we should be like this, like straight up, right? Many of us look like this, like we're curled in. When you're like this, you can't breathe as well. And why, why do you think we're like this? Because we're on fucking computers all day. You look like this right now. Like you look like, you know, Gollum from Lord of the Rings. You look kind of like that, like, like every day as you play video games, as you watch fucking another self-improvement YouTube video, top seven ways to be on nofap you look like fucking gollum from lord of the rings no offense but you do right so this is what you do sit up straight and extend like your chest outwards and your back backwards so this is how your body should be and you almost want to overemphasize it a little bit since you've got like some like damage to reverse and as you do this now breathe from your nose and feel the point at which your breath kind of goes down but then stops so Imagine I'm breathing now and this is indicating where I can feel my breath. Do this with me. Indicate where you can feel your breath get up to. Mine got up just above my belly button. Where did you stop yours? Don't bullshit. Where did you stop yours? Maybe around here, right? Maybe there, maybe around your stomach. I can guarantee that not a single person who has a problem with fapping who's watching this video brought their fingers down all the way to their balls. When you can feel your breath in your balls and in your dick, by that point, you'll be able to control your lust. It's almost that simple. That's the metric that I'll tell you. So this is what you need to do. You need to get to the point where you can, what Elliot Holtz, this old YouTuber used to say is, breathe into your balls. You wanna breathe so fully and so deeply and for so long that your balls kind of move. They kind of like, <laughs> they kind of like jump a little bit, right? So you try it again. This time, really breathe fully. It should be almost like a 10, 15 second breath. Mine again was only about five second breath and mine only got to my belly button. So that means I'm restrained in some way. If I got a random trigger right now, like if I thought of porn or whatever, I'd, it would be a struggle for me to overcome that. It would be a, a struggle for me to overcome that, right? 
What we need to do then sometimes is to free up your body even more. Maybe you've been sat down for too long. Maybe you need to like twist and turn and be authentic to yourself that your body's kind of restrained. Maybe you need to like, you know, like, like stretch out like this and let your, your body open up a little bit more. And what we want is imagine yourself in that character selection mode again and that red mist is stuck over your dick. What we want is for you to visualize that when you breathe, that red mist starts to move. When you inhale, the red mist gets kind of more concentrated and darker. This is the problem. When you are in this mode of like being triggered and you don't wanting to like to fap, you, you breathe so shallowly that the energy doesn't really move. It just stays there in your genitals or in your mind. But if you can start to open up your breathing and to have prolonged inhales, prolonged exhales, exhale, sorry, I should have mentioned exhales are the ones that will spread the energy out everywhere, which is what you want. That feels like a warm delight. So when the energy is all on your dick, it feels like, oh fuck, I really want to fap, I need to release. When the energy moves all across your body to your fingertips, to your toes, it feels kind of like a, um, kind of like a, a, a 5% buff in a video game that's just on you all the time. It's like, it, you don't need this need to explode. It's like this nice like rejuvenating buff that you get from, I don't know, killing the, the jungle monster in League of Legends. I'm assuming you, you understand these, no offense. I'm assuming you understand these terms, right? So when you feel the next time that you wanna fap and you, you've, you're mentally fantasizing about women or your dicks gets hard and you feel like you need to release, Focus way more on your breath and just imagine that when you breathe fully, what's happening is that clump of dark red sexual energy, when you breathe fully, starts to open up and get a little bit lighter till it gets like pink. When you keep breathing fully, visualize that dark red energy spreading out, not just in your dick anymore, but all across your bed. Maybe do it to the rhythm of like 15 breaths, which will take a few minutes. We'll get it. The, that red energy will then touch your fingertips and your toes. So that's about the rhythm, right? So basically the, the action step here is the next time you feel like you need to fap, breathe really slowly for 15 breaths. Count it to 15 and every breath that you do, see that dark red glob ball of energy of like misty energy start to expand and dilute throughout your body and when it reaches your fingertips and toes you won't even want to like fat or release anymore it won't feel like you need to release it'll feel like just a pleasant boost to your normal everyday life that boost you can then go and use for your work for your purpose for your workouts everything and you don't feel like a a, a goblin in public anymore i want to just read the, the rest of the comments here, you can skip off. That's the advice I was going to give, but I'm, I'm just going to read the rest of the comments if you were interested in that. So when Mason said that you should still be looking at girls, someone replied and said, you do not understand at all. This man is trying to have standards and you are telling him that it's fine. I struggle with the same thing. And the answer is to not fantasize or obsess over a woman. Or a woman. I don't know what you were thinking when you posted this. I think they're both half right. You, I don't think staring at a woman is a good thing because it makes her feel weird and it also makes you feel like a dirty like creep as well. So certainly don't stare, but I think it's absolutely normal and healthy to like look at a girl that you're attracted to. I think that's absolutely fine. I think what you need to do is, is when you do get like horny and you build up the lust, learn how to circulate that energy. Someone else commented, this is normal and absolutely not an excuse to fap. Watch Hamza's mental health guide. Masturbation is not a problem. It's a symptom of poor mental health. Yeah, you can do that as well. You can just search up on YouTube, Hamza mental health. Another comment, this is on um, Adonis Gang, by the way, which is now free. So you can go and click on the top link in this video. It's a free online community for men who are on self-improvement. So I think you'll probably love that. Aban said, yeah, I just want to echo the other comments. You can be, still be attracted to her without touching yourself. Ryan said, don't battle with lust, accept your sexual desire, don't fear it, then transform it into masculine energy. Think about it. If you slept with her, you'll probably get bored. Yeah, true. This is, this is a good, um, good comment there. So I just want to uh, give Andrew, the, the original poster, a bit more advice. He said... So there's this girl, you're spending time with her. If you enjoy spending time with her, but you don't want to be with her because basically she's lower than your standards. 
So I respect that. As young men, we should still be having standards. So many young guys will basically just accept whatever girl is in, into them. And then they'll wonder why like they keep having a, like a list of bad relationships. No offense to anyone, but I did this like when I was younger. When I was like more lonely in high school and you know deprived of female intimacy, basically after a few months, like some random girl would show me like some kind of attention and I'd get hooked onto her and think that she was amazing. And it was only once I got her a month or two later that I realized, oh, she's not even that great. So you really enjoy t spending time with her, which is a really good thing. This is something that, that guys don't really speak about these days. Many guys are in this mode of like, yeah, I don't care about girls. Girls are, are, are you know, they've got cooties and like, I don't want to spend time with them. I just want to work on, and you know, Andrew Tate said to just work all day. What I've seen is, is truly masculine men enjoy spending time with women. It's as simple as that. Like the guys who attract wonderful, beautiful women, those guys actually like spending time with women. And if you have normalized and actualized your masculine energy, you'll enjoy spending time with women. There's a lot of guys who are, who are living this like recluse mode right now, this hermit mode. I, I, like monk mode is still valuable, but even on monk mode, you know what's interesting? I've told you about monk mode, even on monk mode, when I was on it in like 2020, 2021, even on monk mode, I still spoke to girls. I still cold approached. I didn't really like, you know, go out and party or anything, but I still love speaking to women like in the gym. Like I, I wouldn't purposely go out and do it. But if, for example, in the gym, I'd still go and speak to women there. And it was like the delight, it was like the highlight of my day of like, you know, just getting a rejuvenating feminine energy. So it, it's important that, that, we acknowledge that desire within ourselves that we actually like to spend time with women, especially women who are of higher quality and intelligent and educated. But it seems like this woman, like, like this poster has said that, oh, but she's a half Jeffrey, a half Jessica. So she's not like doing good habits. And, you know, she's probably like um, being a bit of a degenerate or something. So I don't think you should force yourself to like be with her. But this is the issue of male and female friendships naturally one person will end up getting intimate like feelings for the other person and it seems to me that it's you i wonder if she even wants a relationship with you i wonder if she just thinks you're just friends because no offense to the poster here in general when there's a male and female friendship one of them will start to want to be with the other person sexually and usually that person who has the desire is usually the the lower how, how do i say this like the lower desirable the less desirable person overall usually that's the guy because women generally just have a high level of desirability lots of men desire women but many men aren't desired so when there's a male and female friendship what i'm saying is most of the time the guy will end up getting feelings for the girl and it overcomplicates things and the guy's literally living this double lie where he wants to be friends with her and he wants to uh, be with her but he keeps pretending to be friends and he's so scared of bringing up the answer because he knows it's going to be no he this is why you're so fucking scared so basically like you're putting yourself in the friend zone you can say all you want that oh, i just want to see her as a friend but that's only like your, your higher level thinking. Your real desire, unfortunately, is to be with her because you've developed feelings from the good times spent together. He hasn't mentioned so much of like the times that they've had, but men and women actually bond in, in slightly different ways. And so I don't know how, like, how accurate this science is that I've got here. You've heard of the, the hormone oxytocin, which is kind of like the, the connecting hormone. Basically, when we do loving things together we have this hormone build up which connects us to each other it's kind of like natural selection because if that hormone comes in then two people will stay together and then they'll be more likely to like have sex and reproduce right and women ha often have more of this hormone than men do what i heard was interesting was that men actually have much more of a different kind of hormone or whatever it is called vasopressin and basically for men it's not just about being like having cute times together it's about overcoming challenges and constraints. Basically, as men, if we make progress with a woman, even not on something intimate, but just imagine if we work on something with a woman, if we go to the gym with a woman and we're making progress, if we work on a project with a woman and we make progress, we have this like hormone buildup inside of us that actually makes us attached to that woman and start to develop feelings for her. You can see how fucking deadly this is in schools and workplaces where like, 
you're not going to be very touchy, intimate, intimate. So the woman's oxytocin hormone doesn't really go up that much, but you're naturally doing a bunch of work and projects together. So the man's vasopressin, uh, men and women have got both, but it, I think that men have a lot more vasopressin, women have a lot more oxytocin. And so when you, you're in school with this girl that has basically like friend zoned you, even though you don't want to admit it, or you're in work with this girl, What's happening is you're building up this attachment towards her because of this hormone, because you're working on stuff and you're making progress together. So it's this lethal combination of like, if you spend happy times together and you're randomly talking about the homework, you're attaching yourself further. If I'm giving you honest advice, I don't think you can just like spend time with her, but not keep getting more and more attached. If you disappeared for like three years and came back and you could maybe spend time with her, maybe you'd polarize her and sleep with her or something, but it doesn't seem like that's the plan. For the guys who are stuck in the friend zone, it's, it's, a, it's a deeply painful situation to be in because quite frankly, you're just a fucking pussy. That's why you're there. You need like a big brother figure to just say this to you because many people won't. If you're in the friend zone right now and there's this girl that you haven't spoke to, like, you know, she's, she's your friend and you have feelings for her. The reason why is because you are a pussy. You are an absolute pussy and I hope that I'm making you feel bad. You can, you know, act like more of a pussy and think, yeah, Hamza's being mean, I'm gonna click off this video. But you need someone to, to hit you with some harsh masculine truth and just tell you, bro, you're acting like a pussy. Because how can you spend weeks or months waiting to just say one sentence to this girl to find out if she actually likes you back? She doesn't. I'm just gonna tell you right now, she doesn't. That the, the amount of times where the guy likes the girl, but he keeps pretending that they're friends. And eventually like, you know, like he spends fucking months of his high school time, of his work time being distracted, thinking about her because he's just too much of a pussy to look her in the face and say, I like you. Do you like me? Do you want to go on a date? Literally, that's like, like, it doesn't sound so romantic, but if you just said it like that, just to make it easy, you could even text her that as well and say like, because you know it's not going to work, right? That's why you're so scared. You know that it's not going to work and you have a good thing going because there's a female human who's actually given you some interaction. And so you're like, wow, I've got to keep this safe. That means that you literally have like, like a sliver of respect for yourself. You're in this situation, young man, and also the young men who are watching this who are stuck in the friend zone. You're in this situation because you're acting like, like a weak little man. You have to polarize women. You have to show your attentions and, and as quickly as possible, in my opinion. You have to like, like, like speak to a woman that you want and tell her that you want her and show her that. Because if you live this double lie, this life where you're basically like pretending to be her friend and don't bullshit yourself because it is pretending. You're pretending to be her friend. You're selling her a lie because you're acting like a pussy. What kind of integrity is this? You look her in the eyes and you tell her, this is how I feel about you. Do you feel the same way? And you, you basically put on the mask of masculinity when she says no. And then you come home to your little internet community and then get into the red pill. That's a, we all had to do that, bro. We all had to. Now, obviously don't do that. But like, that's the reason why this young man won't be upfront with this woman and say like, that's what I'm desiring. And you know, you're saying, oh, well, I don't really want to be with her. We yeah, have well, fair enough respect, but then you can't be spending time with her. What are you trying to do? Like, like pretend to be friends with her when, when you want to fuck, but you don't actually want to fuck because you're being intelligent. If you don't want to fuck a woman and you don't want to be friends with her, then sure be civil with her. But then why are you still continuing to spend time with her? Especially if you've said that, oh yeah, she's like a half Jeffrey as well. You're spending time with her because you're actually attracted to her, but your more intelligent brain is telling you that she's not a good partner. And so you need to leave it. But the only way you can leave it is if you stop torturing yourself and, and spending that time with her. And if you stop and you disappear, it's going to be awkward, like you said. So you've just got to basically tell her the truth and take the L and say, okay, I like you, but I don't really want to date right now. And so I just feel like we can't really be friends. For the guys who are friend zoned, by the way, that's actually the, the only way that she'll actually begin to like you is if you go with that approach. Because trying it your way, I, no offense, and I don't mean to be racist, but this is like, I can't help but imagine Indians really have problems with this. I don't know what it is about Indian and Pakistani culture, but I, I know particularly brown guys are, are particularly bad for this because they're just, a lot of them are just pussies. A lot of them are just so scared of just speaking to like the girl that they like. And I've heard a lot with like Indian culture is like this, like women are all there, like, like um, I don't know, women and men there aren't mixing well. 
But fuck me, man. I, like when I think, that, and I'm being you know aggressive towards you because I've done this shit. I'm basically just speaking to my younger self. I, when I think about the months of my life that I wasted pursuing a woman but not even telling her, and eventually, eventually making it known, and of course she didn't fucking like me because I was a pussy. I think like what a fucking waste of of brain points when you're going through your exams in school and you're literally looking at her over in the exam hall. What if you just had some respect to yourself and just shot your shot today? There's like a 0.1% chance she'll be like, oh my God, I've liked you too all this time and stuff. Most likely she's just gonna say no, but it's like, why not get the no today rather than no three months from now and just pretend that you're like friends and you're, you're, basically, you're basically being her texting buddy. There's a, a harsh lesson that you need to learn about modern women. They love notifications. Men do as well, but basically modern unintelligent people, which I would say is probably about 80 to 90% of people, they love notifications. So a normal woman these days will text you back, not because she likes you, not because she's interested in you, but just because she loves getting another notification in her phone. If you've ever like playfully teased the girl and grabbed her phone and you know, like saw some messages or something, what you'll see is that she has 10 unopened messages on WhatsApp, 10 unopened messages on Snapchat. They love accumulating that because it gives them like a sense of security and status and, and comfort and self-worth. Men, a lot of men would be the same, but most men don't even have that, like that many girls were texting them anyway. Basically, most people are just fucking unintelligent and losers. This is, I, like, I, I like people. I, I, I seem like such a person who like hates people. I just like people who are actually alive and who have read a book in the last year. Like, I, like that's not a high standard, right? I always seem so insulting towards like people and human beings. But it's just like, I just have like a baseline level of standard where like, I don't want to like mix with anyone who is unintelligent, who hasn't even read a single book this year, who hasn't even educated themselves even for like an hour this year. It's just pathetic. It's like, why would you want to spend a second with anyone like that? Yeah, I think that's all, all that I've got to say. I apologize for being like a bit like rude and a bit of a dickhead in this video, but I really wish that someone who had a bit more of that big brother energy looked at me when I was be basically being a simp and like a, um, a friend, you know, friend zoning myself and told me to like, stop being a pussy. Issue was when I was friend zoning myself and I was, I was in a friend zone with some girls, like, you know, one girl there, then three months later with another girl and I was acting like a pussy. My brother, big brother, wasn't experienced enough in dating to kind of tell me otherwise. So he didn't think it was weird what I was doing either. And so basically like both of us are just fucking like simps for a long time. And like, because many young men haven't had, like basically the wise older brother who's actually good with girls, who's good in life. Many young men haven't had even a father figure or any kind of masculine role model. And so I, I hope to give you like at least a little bit of that and just tell you from my learning lessons and from what I've seen with many men who have come into my life, who've come into like, um, you know, my audience, who spoke to me and asked me for advice. This does not go anywhere good. And you'll save a few months of just overthinking and basically wasting your brain on this instead of putting your brain into something which is so much more valuable, like the girl that you actually really wanna be with, who wants to be with you. If you're here like chasing after this girl who doesn't even know that you like her because you're pretending to be friends, you're not saving any of your brain and your time to make yourself attractive for the woman who would actually be right for you. So you're doing no one like like no one good here. I hope that helps you. If you wanna ask me questions like that, my um, link is in the bio. It's a free online community for men who are on self-improvement, so you probably will, will um, like that. So yeah, see you soon. Mwah.